Okay, so guys, I see that the Combat Kids, really good classical channel, has uploaded a video going over some of the recent SOD Phase 3 changes. And there's been a lot class rebalancing. There's been some raid retuning, some blue posting, some posting on Twitter, I, I bet we're going to talk about. And so I want to see what's going on. Let's take a look. Uh, what is happening in Season of Discovery? Here we go. Okay, what is happening with Season of Discovery? Brand new account. I don't know. Okay, what is happening oh, with bad. Season of Discovery? Brand new account restrictions, tons of information on the new raid, including class ranking so far, yeah. incredible gear you can acquire right now, community comments, so much more. My name's Sky from the Comeback Kids. This is All your right, Season of Discovery it. News. Grab a cup of coffee, sit down. We got coffee. a lot to discuss today. Okay, I don't know about you all, but I am sick and tired of eating fast food Oh, we got the garbage. factor sponsorship. Down as quick as possible to get right back to game. You know, and then when I want bad. a decent meal, I have to either cook Legit, for an hour or spend a ridiculous amount of money to have it delivered. <laughs> That's why if you're a real gamer like me, factor meals is the perfect solution to your food problem. Oh. Picture this, affordable, healthy, and ready to eat oh. meals in under two minutes, catered specifically to any diet needed like high protein, so every couple months, there will be some like discount or promotion for some of these pre-made meal or ready meal services, Factor included. And every time we get a good discount, we order these at my house. Sometimes it's Factor, sometimes it's another one. But if you keep an eye out on these different food services, you can actually get some good discounts. Vegan, gluten-free, keto, and more. It's true. Guys, Same. please yeah, it's, it's do yourself smart to a do favor. That, Eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, cleaning up, save your money, and eat better with restaurant-quality oh, meals like delivered off. right to your door. Click the link in the description below and use my code COMEBACKAPR50 to get 50% yeah. off your first factor box and 20% off your next month of it's orders. It's actually a good Not deal, Not only do real. you eat better, but you also directly support the channel to keep the dream alive. Now, let's get back to the content. Oh, wow. Oh, that's actually it. so good. What? <laughs> that's crazy. Hell yeah. Okay, okay let's welcome go. back. Now, with the new phase comes always new ways for Blizzard to try and fight against the you know, bot meta inside of World of Warcraft because uh -huh. they actually just revealed that there's a brand new account restriction for brand new players in Season of this Discovery. This is not good. Now, for some unknown reason out there, there have been a small amount of players throughout the forum stating that they can't trade, use mail, or even use the auction house at all on their characters, yeah. and it's left them really frustrated and Check confused. This out. Blizzard actually came out with some clarifications and some statements on the reason that this is happening is because if it's your first time adding game time onto your WoW account, you will not be able to trade with other players, usually the auction house, or in-game mail for 30 days. If you are on a fresh World of Warcraft account, it's your first time adding game time. You can't trade, auction house, or use the mailbox for 30 days. And this is because Blizzard is trying to use this, this new function to combat botting and gold selling and gold trading. Okay, so most certainly this will make it a little bit more cumbersome to operate bots and sell gold, no doubt. It really really kneecaps and inconveniences new players so if you're if you're a new player to season three you're like hey man i heard about season of discovery on reddit or from my friend at work or whatever and i made my friend i've never played wow i'm gonna make a new account i'm gonna play you can't do some of the most basic like interplayer interaction stuff economic interactions you can't even do it for 30 days that really trading auction house mailbox as a fresh player to this game you cannot do that for 30 days so if you're someone that's watching your favorite streamers are you or asmgold and you're like oh man that seems fun i want to log in i want to try to play the game guess what ah they're gonna have a real tough time for 30 days also there's sort of an implicit message here let me try to break that down see if this makes sense blizzard is implementing this restriction on new accounts and so blizzard has decided this is going to do more damage to bots than it is to new players. What can you kind of deduce here? Maybe there's not that many new players. If Blizzard is comfortable implement, implementing these 30-day account restrictions and it damages new players, maybe they've got the data, maybe they've got the analytics at Blizzard. They say, listen, we don't really have that many new players, so who cares? It might inconvenience uh, 10 people per month, right? Or whatever. They've decided it's it's worth it to do this to damage the bots. And, and it, you know, it's going to be... So maybe that's kind of a bad sign also. Maybe there's not that many new players coming to the game. And the ones that are, you're not going to have a fun time. Rough. Then after that, the restrictions will be lifted automatically. And you can go about days. your normal day-to-day -day activities. Now, of course, what this means is that they're trying to combat botting 
and gold buying inside of Season of Discovery. Because usually what players yeah. will do is they'll have a sort of burner account where they will pay $15 and get a bunch of gold bought on that burner account to then trade it over to their main oh. characters. And the risk of them getting caught is very low. Doing so don't you think like if you're a botter or a gold seller or a gold buyer, isn't this just going to slow people down by 30 days? Like if, if I'm if I'm a professional botter and I'm operating 100 bots, I'm just going to make an account and then wait 30 days and, and then and then start botting. Right. It's just going to like kick the can down the road 30 days. Like I, I don't I don't really know how much of an impact it is. In fact, what I would do, like maybe Blizzard is hoping, OK, they're going to start botting on their account. They're going to save up all their gold and then they're going to try to sell it after 30 days when they can trade. But they're going to bot during the 30 day sort of probation period. And, and in that 30 day period, we can catch them. We're going to catch them before they have a chance to offload the gold. But I think the smart botters are just going to say, okay, I'm going to pay for an account and I'm not going to do anything on it. I'm just going to let it sit there. I'm not going to bot on it at all. I'm going to wait 30 days and then I'm going to go because I don't want to risk getting banned during the 30 day probationary period. That, se that seems like, like if I was a botter, that's what I would do. I don't know. Hey, we'll see. Doing that. So Blizzard definitely helped against something like that by stepping in and eliminating this for 30 days at your first initial, you know, entrance yeah. into world of warcraft but it doesn't look like it's causing some frustrations to brand new players for a little while which yeah i'm not gonna lie seems very tough not using yeah, the auction house for 30 days straight but we'll see how this goes and continues to play out as we move into the future i've seen some people on twitter defending this saying oh well if you're a new player you're, you don't like you don't even use the auction house anyway you don't even use the mailbox anyway you don't trade with people anyway if you're a new player if it's your first time playing wow like, what? I think that's a load of baloney. Within 30 days as a new player to the game, I think you are using the auction house. I think you are trading. I think you are using the mailbox. I think so. I think I think you are. Future. Not only that, though, it seems that with phase three, we got some brand new interesting waylaid supply rewards for reaching Exalted. This is something that a yeah. lot of the player base and myself stuff. have been really excited to see. What and these are effectively heirlooms. Look binds to a uh, binds to blizzard account it's a headpiece so you can buy hair uh, heirloom heirloom headpieces and mail them to a level one alt um there's the trinket you sometimes find additional waylaid supplies from enemies if you mail this waylaid this bonus waylaid trinket to an alt it's going to help you level right because the waylaid boxes actually give a lot of xp what they would be integrating at the very end of the reputation grind and we're finally getting yep. a first look at it as you can see on screen, we have more items in the head slot piece, which work almost like heirlooms to help Pretty speed much. up the process of leveling, which are bind on account for your characters. You have an 18 slot bag, a trinket that allows you to sometimes find additional waylaid supplies from enemies, and a fun trinket that turns you inanimate. Now, I do think these rewards are cool, especially the one where you find additional waylaid I, supplies, I which fine, can help yeah. you maybe even make some gold off of it. But if I'm being completely XP. honest with everyone here and myself, I was kind of hoping and expecting for something a bit more flavorful for reaching Exalted. I don't know, something maybe that involves crafting, some... I think kind of what happened was in Phase 1, um, getting to Honored, or actually fr Friendly, it, they nerfed it, with the Waylaid Supply Faction was kind of mandatory if you wanted to have all of your runes, and people hated it. People hated having their like player power gatekept by this reputation that a lot of people didn't like. And so I think in Phase 2 and now in Phase 3, Blizzard has been like very worried. They've been scared to put powerful rewards on this reputation because of the negative feedback they got. And so in, in a way, I feel like they've kind of like walked back from this rep. Maybe they're like kind of not so happy with it. They're not scrapping it because you still get some stuff, but I think they just got a lot of negative feedback in phase one. And they're like, okay, we're just going to kind of like not really put too much on it because we don't want people to feel like they have to do it. But if they don't want to do it, you know. So. Recipes or maybe a way to buy yeah, rune like slots happened. for your alternate characters to make it a bit easier to collect runes for them. Like maybe you yep. could buy something that gives you a random rune and it's bind on account that you can give to one of your alts. Or something that makes you buy the, you know, Dark Rider rune instantly rather than having to go through that whole process most likely alone because not many people are doing it. Don't get me wrong. I love that they're adding these items to make you more powerful early on in your leveling so you can level up quicker. But I'm just really hoping they continue to add on to this reputation vendor as we head into the level 60 in just a few months. Overall, though, I'm not complaining because I think there's a lot of cool things in the Waylaid Supply reputation vendor. 
I just hope they add some more flavorful it's okay. things. Speaking of flavorful items that came to Season of Discovery, it'd be a shame if we didn't bring up the epic crafting quest line for Phase 3 that gives you some very solid profession recipes. Similar to Phase 1 and 2 to unlock your epic crafting gear. I'll say we're like a week and a half into Phase 3 now. I have not done this. This is a, and I'm, I'm going to have to do it soon. I want to do it soon, but this is a lesson that I learned in phase one and in phase two, trying to do your profession stuff and the new profession, um, quest chains get and, and make the new Epic gear and stuff like that early on in the phase is a huge waste of money. It's so much money to do this stuff early on in the phase. And if you just wait two weeks or so the price, it's like one sixth or one fifth of what it is in the first couple days. So I'm just like kind of waiting. I'm not in a hurry, but I'll do it soon. You'll be sent on a super long detailed quest line, taking you across all of Azeroth and once again, crossing paths with the shadowy figure. If you're oh, looking wow. for a detailed guide, you can check out the Simon Eyes video in the link in the description below. He put out a very good video on that, or you can check out the Wowhead article we have linked in the description below as well. It's important to know that after you complete this long quest chain, most of the items have effects that are restricted to being within the nightmare, which in all likelihood means that it'll only work inside a sunken temple as well as the nightmare incursions. Yeah, I was curious. So does anyone know for a fact, does in the nightmare count as being inside of Sunken Temple? It does. Okay, it Most does. Most of the crafted there items require a mantle of nightmares okay. as well to craft, which of course you will be rewarded with one for completing the quest chain. But there if you, you want to get an additional one, you could purchase them for a very minor 10 gold each inside a booty bay. I will say there okay. have been some issues with the crafting quest chain over the last few days because you know, at one point you need to wait for an NPC to spawn and the respawn timer is like anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes in between oh, each other, man, which felt really, sucks. really bad to do. And this is something yeah. that Blizzard was looking at and they stated they were going to fix very soon. So hopefully by the time you guys see this video, it's already fixed. That's been fixed. So let's see about that. Don't forget with this epic crafting gear, you can get some fantastic shoulders if you're tailoring, blacksmithing or leatherworking. Some decent bracers if you're an engineer, yeah, flasks really if you're an alchemist, and sigils if you're an enchanter. So if you're looking for a power spike, definitely look into this. And speaking of big power spikes, one of the strongest things you can do right now this week is attempt to grab the Dark Moon card trinket set. I saw I saw this pop up on Wowhead the other day. It says Ace of Nightmares found just in time. I I, I didn't know that it was like ever not found. It it so it drops inside of the raid, right? And so, I, and so bet between the two Sunken Temple runs I've done now, I've seen like four different Ace of Nightmares. It seems like it drops really often inside the raid, actually. Allowing you access to some of the most powerful trinkets we've seen inside of Season of Discovery. The Sandstorm uh -huh. card dealing damage around you, which is great for tanks or melee DPS. The Dark Moon card yep. Torment, which is fantastic for PvP, which gives you a chance to cause a target to wander and suffer for three seconds, kind of working like a stun. And then another card that leeches health deals a nice chunk of burst damage, which is probably good for Ooh. ranged DPS. Now, there are a wide variety of ways to target farm. That's like that's like a great uh, like farming trinket. I like that a lot. Farm these specific cards out there, and yeah. I know it could get very confusing. I actually did some research. I put a link in the description below for you guys showing you exactly where to farm these specific cards, whether it be, you know, certain mobs out in the open world, certain bosses inside of dungeons, whatever the case may be. Additionally, though, you can take your wild offerings, which work almost as like you know, heroic dungeon type tokens, which you acquire from killing the ghost at the end of yep. the instance, and then turn them in at the vendor to get the shadow tooth bag, which gives you a random card as well. Not only is this a great way to make your character can significantly you get stronger using these cards, because these trinkets are just absolutely game changing. They can be a fantastic way in making gold and, you know, getting these cards and selling them directly on the auction house, because a lot of people are looking to buy them right now. So either no way, doubt. very, very I wonder if you're like spam farming dungeons to buy shadow tooth bags to get dark moon cards is that a good gold farm how much gold can you make per hour hyper farming shadow tooth bags i don't know maybe it's decent Big, you guys should go check it out they're actually so strong that recently the sandstorm card was nerfed uh but before the nerf it was like tripling shaman's right. brand new uh broken lightning shield room which puts into perspective yeah, pre-nerf, pre it was so good. I remember the the number one Metamorphosis Warlock D, uh, parse was two times the damage of the number two parse. Like, he did a 1,000 DPS, and it's because he had this trinket when it was busted. It was a 1,000 DPS with the broken trinket versus 500, the guy that did not have the trinket. It was, in, it was like doubling your damage. It was insane. How strong these class cards really were. Uh, additionally, when it comes to being broken, it seems like Shaman's got another broken ability added to their toolkit, 
Listen, as a shaman main, I think this is starting to become a little bit of a meme at this point because I knew this ability was going to be broken three weeks ago when it was data mined. And when and what really put it into perspective was the fact that I've been playing other tanking classes like the Paladin, Warrior, Guardian, Druid, and playing Enhancement Shaman Tank is kind of like playing the game on easy mode. Uh, not only are you incredibly tanky, but you just got a brand new ability that deals so much damage to everyone around you on a one second cooldown it is so so strong which is by far the most broken thing i've seen for tanks inside of sod so far yeah. overall very strong and i see this getting adjusted this week speaking yeah. of adjustments it seems that we got our very first hot fix patch for multiple things inside of season of discovery phase three which include nerfs to the avatar of a car changes to the nightmare incursions and oh i actually did not see that they nerfed avatar of a car I remember within like probably four or five days, they nerfed they nerfed every boss's HP other than Avatar of Hakkar. And then I guess they chose to follow up. Okay, now we got to nerf Avatar of Hakkar also. So now every single boss in the raid has had its HP nerfed. And some fixes for some to classes some out there. For warrior tanks, it seems that their shield slam ability wasn't properly generating enough of the threat. Can I say real fast? It's kind of astounding that they, that every single boss had way too much HP. I, I would imagine... In regards to designing a raid, determining how much HP the bosses should have is like the easiest part. Because you can do a sim of every class's DPS. You can simulate that. How much DPS does a Warlock do? How much DPS does a Rogue do? And then you can kind of like do the math. Okay, so if, if an average raid group is doing this much DPS, how much HP should the boss have? How long do we want the boss fight to be? Okay, then it should have this much HP. It's I think it's like a pretty easy equation. But somehow every single boss had way too much hp and so they had to nerf every single boss in the raid okay then that it was All actually right. adjusted to be so they fixed that as well as their devastate ability wasn't even correctly dealing the right amount of damage so they fixed that as well so i guess they're gonna work properly now um yeah when go. it comes to nightmare incursions it seems like they're changing up the quest objectives for nightmare incursions which will now have multiple you know simultaneous spawn locations for the looting quest at the same time so we'll have to see okay. how this changes some of the quests out there and then a very big one is that they're reducing the experience awarded from Nightmare Incursions by 50%. Previously, yeah. when the phase first dropped, we were getting around 7,700 experience more, point at its peak, which now you're getting around 3,000-ish per turn in. Either way, it's still a very, very fast way to level up if you want to go do it. It's just not going to be the only way you'd want to level anymore. You'd probably want to go do other things like dungeons with a... I think, I think spamming Incursions is still technically the best but it's not like it's not so insanely better than everything else that you feel like a dumbass for not doing it now it's like a little bit better but you know if i want to have more fun doing something else it's only five percent worse or ten percent worse okay fine whereas before it like these were like two times better than everything else it was insane a bunch of quests or the uh, raid nuts. lockouts to get a bunch of xp as well and then finally for the last change for nightmare incursions they're actually increasing the reputation granted by the level 50 quest now previously you would acquire 75 reputation per yeah, quest yeah, but think, that is now slightly being changed more, to where the escort quests give you 100 rep each and the kill quest give you 150 providing more reputation because you, you know you have to do more work to turn in that quest Yep. which makes sense overall this is definitely going to speed up the reputation grind a little bit which is always a good thing as well considering i have a bunch of characters i want to go play and do all this reputation grinding yep. with so a little bit easier well there's a lot of if not best in slot gear from exalted it's like second or very close to being best in slot i'm i want to get exalted so i can get a ring the the spellcaster ring seems really good it's some good gear i don't mind at all uh additionally it seems that the sunken temple raid is getting nerfed for a third time within a matter of five days, being launched with the Shade of Aranicus, having yep. a ton of his abilities being reduced in threat to the actual raid drastically, as well yep. as his health being reduced by over 50%. Yes, you heard that properly, going from 4 million HP down to 1.5 million health, which is a very, very big change, and will make this boss a lot easier. Oh, I, dude, I think they nerfed it again that I, I didn't even realize this. They went from 4.5 to like 2.4 down to 1.4 yeah wow and before now listen i don't know about you all ladies and gentlemen but something that i've always loved in world of warcraft is you know at least some challenging progression content on the last two bosses within a raid usually what happens inside of wow is a formula they've you know consistently followed is that the first four or five bosses within a raid are usually layup bosses meaning that they're very straightforward not yeah. so much challenge, but generally they're there 
to give you some loot to prep you for the final bosses, right? Because the final bosses are typically the hardest bosses in most cases out. So I want to see real fast, uh, Warcraft Logs Classic, what bosses in Sunken Temple seem to be difficult for people? Uh, okay, so we can do Sunken Temple Progress. So right here. Okay, so obviously, so this boss here, this is Aranicus. Obviously, people have a lot of trouble with Aranicus. Seems like most guilds, if we can manage to kill Aranicus, we're going to be able to kill Avatar of a car, and then we're 8 out of 8. Okay, so th this, is, this means guilds are hard stuck on Aranicus. Um, this is the double dragon boss, or no, it's like, it's like the, it's like the shadow realm dragon boss. It can be kind of annoying, I guess. Um, this, this would be double dragon boss, right? And so it seems like guilds are finding the double dragon boss where they have the knockback that pushes you into the hole as actually being harder than the Jamal on the prophet boss. Yeah. Generally speaking. Okay. Yeah. I, th I think this makes, I think this makes a lot of sense. I think so. Yeah, probably. Let's play this. Uh, there we go. Out there. Nerfing the final two bosses already in Sunken Temple multiple times within less than a week, I think personally is a mistake because challenge is one of those things that keeps players busy inside of an MMORPG. You know, it gives them something to strive towards, something for a long time players have to, you know, constantly work at, you know, get their previous consumables, war buffs, and then go. I have maybe a very unpopular opinion about this. Um, I, th I think the raid was way too hard when it came out. And once again, not hard for me, probably not hard for you. If you're someone who's on YouTube or Twitch watching World of Warcraft content, you're probably an above average player. It probably wasn't too hard for you. The average player, I think they were just getting upset and very frustrated with Sunken Temple. And I think that if you, if you don't balance the raid around the average player, um, and by the way, the majority of the players are average players. And so if you don't cater the game to those people, I think you risk having them uh, get upset and quit. And we need to keep in mind, Season of Discovery has always been marketed as like a very casual, uh, uh, sort of like a new player friendly, uh, low time investment sort of game mode. And so, yeah, I think I think if you have the, the raid content be too sweaty and too frustrating, I think... I think it actually does a lot of damage to the game. Yeah, no, this, yeah, this is called Season of Dads. S-O-D, Season of Dads. That's kind of how the game was marketed, right? And we were, in fact, we were explicitly told as such by Blizzard uh, at BlizzCon. This is a game kind of for casuals. And yeah, and, and so I think if you don't build the game around those people, then I think you're going to have problems. I think so. Go back in there and try it again. I mean, beating something on the first or second try now, the fact of the matter is, it's probably just going to be too easy. I mean, I was in a raid last night with my guild, and we went five out of eight with no consumables, no pre-raid best in slot, no world buffs, pretty much nothing. And you went five out of eight, though. You went five. Listen, five out of eight is not eight out of eight. And like you said, the first couple bosses are kind of freebies. We're talking about the final, the final two or three bosses that are challenging. You went five out of eight. Okay? Not only that, we did the raid completely blind, meaning that. We had no add-ons, no guides, no alerts, no DBM to help us at all. Now listen, I don't know, I personally would have wanted them to hold out on the nerfs a little bit longer so at least, you know, it can give a lot of the guilds out there an opportunity to try to see something that's like, you know, very difficult or challenging or to progress toward. Mm -hmm. So you guys got to let me know in the comments section below what you all think about it. Are I you think for it's really them nerfing they nerf the raid the to make it easier? So. Or do you like the raid being a lot more challenging? And at least the final two bosses can be a little bit difficult to where you have to progress toward. Let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, additionally, when it comes to Sunken Temple, the loot sources for every single boss was officially revealed over on Wowhead. So if you're target farming a specific weapon or armor piece, yeah, you can you go, go check it out right now and pray to the gods right before you actually fight that said boss in this week's raid. I have to say, I think that the loot dropping in Sunken Temple is much more compelling than the Nomergon loot. The Nomergon loot was very, very hard to get excited about. I think the loot in, in Sunken Temple is much more exciting, which is a good thing. That you'd want that item to drop. I'm personally hoping for that two-handed, like, snake staff that gives 2% crit. That thing looks awesome, and it looks very strong. I'm excited for that one. Okay, now moving on now to the juice of today's video, being about the Ooh. logs inside of Sunken Temple for the first lockout, as well as the first day in the second lockout. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, these numbers and data you see here are very clearly early on in the phase. Yep. There's adjustments coming very soon to a lot of these classes, I would say, out there. But I got to tell you, we have a lot of changes previously from the last phase from Nomergan. I'm just going to say you all were wrong about melee DPS being crap this phase because Ooh. kicking things off with our top damaging classes, we have melee hunter and DPS rogue. 
Melee uh -huh. Hunter wasn't really a surprise to me as they don't really require a lot of gear to deal a lot of damage, but typically from what I've seen, wherever they're at at the Melee start of the Hunter phase, that pretty much ends up where they're going to stay in terms of raw DPS as the phase continues. So in my opinion, I would see Melee Hunter slowly starting to drop down as the phase continues. DPS Rogue is officially back, ladies and gentlemen, and this class is dominating right now. We had a few rogues in our Sunken Temple Probably. raid last night, and they were always on top of the Warriors better. Dude, I gotta say, um, I think within two weeks, within clip me, within two weeks, Warrior is going to be at the top of the DPS meters. That's what I think. I think once the meta kind of settles out a little bit, it's going to be Warrior. Maybe it already is. The charts yeah. absolutely blasting these bosses. A simple, straightforward rotation mm -hmm. that deals a ton of damage, easy to learn. Rogues are officially back, and they are here to stay. Moving on now to the next tier uh, of DPS, we have Damaging go. Warrior, Enhancement Shaman as well. And boy, oh boy, DPS Warrior starting off very strong this phase. And in my opinion, I could see them being the top DPS in just a matter of a couple weeks once they acquire some gear. I told you all, ladies and gentlemen, as Season of Discovery is going to go on, Warriors will be the number one DPS. I've been saying it since phase one. All of you guys freaking out. Yeah, wow, man. Who who could have predicted? Like, I'm not surprised. Guys, what is the number one DPS always in Vanilla WoW? It's, war it's Warrior and it's Rogue. And so now you have Melee Hunter. Yeah, imagine that. The closer we get to 60, the better the Melee, the Warriors, the Rogues are doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they start kind of getting their full, their full kit. Yes, they do. I'm panicking all you Warrior mains. You have nothing to worry about, I promise you. The proof is in the pudding. This class has a great and fun in-depth rotation that if you perform it properly, you'll just annihilate things in a matter of seconds. I only see them getting stronger. Uh, Enhancement Shaman is back near the top as well, even though they got nerfed a bunch, which in my uh -huh. personal opinion is a big surprise. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that these fights are very, you know, caster unfriendly and there's a lot of movement, which never feels good as a caster DPS. So melee is going to typically be on top in these scenarios this phase, I would say. Heading into the next tier, we have Pharaoh Druid, Ranged Hunter, and Retribution Paladin. Pharaoh Druid is actually back dude look at this melee hunter rogue warrior enhancement that's melee shaman feral druid ranged hunter that's the first range red red paladin casters suck ranged dps sucks this is the melee phase this we're bro we're playing super smash brothers melee okay Since phase one ladies and gentlemen they have their Man. brand new catnip consumable their wolf's head helmet the power shifting ability of feral is just really kicking right now and it's very cool to see them back near the top of the dps meters like they were in phase one i'm definitely gonna level up my feral druid as soon as possible after seeing this because i've been looking for an excuse to play that character so we'll have to dive into that uh we also have marksmanship hunter performing very well right now due to the fact that there are a lot of these fights require a lot of mobility and they can just you know mm -hmm. instantly get some shots off in between their moving not only that they have a lot of good runes like like lock and load really pushing them over the edge right now and hunter is just Dude, you know the funniest thing about this? Like, I remember back, this is just one week ago. One week ago, every single melee player was crying that Sunken Temple is not a melee friendly raid. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Shut the hell up. This was one week ago. They were all complaining about it. In a really fantastic spot uh -huh. right now. So if you're a hunter, very, very good for you all. Moving on, Retribution Paladin is right on the edge of being great, but also right on the edge of just being flat out bad. Uh, they are the worst melee DPS spec in the entire game, according to these numbers. And considering how hard this raid actually is for casters, they are slowly slipping down, and I'm not sure it's looking too good for them overall. Uh, we'll have to see how they end up in the next few weeks, but if I had to guess, I think they're slowly going to drop down in the rankings, and I don't think it's looking good. Uh, now moving on to the casters, we have Fire Mage and Warlock. Both of these oh specs performed God. incredibly well last it's phase over. when they had some time to, you know, it cast all so their abilities. Over. But due to the current raids mechanics, once again, just being... T you know what really pisses me off is that D it's called DPS Warlock rather than Destruction Warlock or Affliction Warlock. I, I, wanna, I want to have the distinction. I want to be able to look on Warcraft logs at Affliction logs and then also Destruction logs. Fire Mage, Arcane Mage... And Frost Mage, it's all delineated. It's all separated. Why do we have just DPS Warlock? I want to be able to see the difference, right? What's going on here? Tough what for casters to deal with. A bunch of their damage is negated because they constantly have to be moving. Uh, we saw both these classes in the top five throughout the entire phase. So seeing this right here was a very big surprise. Then you have other classes that bring great utility like Elemental Shaman, Balanced Druid, Shadow Priest. 
These it's classes, over. utility spells, and burst windows are fantastic. It They'll always over. have a spot in a raid no matter what. Due to just how much they actually bring, it just feels bad personally when your damage is simply not as high as everyone else's. So we'll have to see how this pans out in the next few weeks. And so finally, over. to the biggest surprise I've seen out of all of season of this. Yeah, no, yeah, you can be a utility class. You can be a utility class that buffs the other classes that don't do anything that no one's going to want in their raid. You know the you know the classes like mage and warlock that we don't want anymore. Yeah, you're a class that buffs those classes. <laughs> so you're so you're double not coming. <laughs> Discovery. Yeah, Frost awesome. Mage isn't the worst garbage can spec in the game right now. It isn't dead last. It is second to last. But the worst oh, in the game man. is Arcane Mage. It is so bad right now because they can it's never awful. get into their you know, turret mode, casting, rotation, all to having to be mobile constantly. And it's just very, very rough for Arcane Mages right now. So if you're an Arcane Mage, let's get some RIPs in the chat for you all. Moving on now to healers. Of course, topping the meters in terms of healing per second has got to Mobility. go down to the Restoration Druid. This class's AoE healing potential is just through the freaking roof right now. Yep. And this is definitely not going to change as the phase goes on. You have Wild Growth paired with Efflorescence, Life Bloom. I mean, this class has so much healing coming out of its ass. Its rotation is just so good at this point. S plus tier healer, innervate, battle res, absolutely mandatory to have in your raid. Uh, next up, we have the... Chat, real quick, on a completely unrelated note, are Warlocks super good in Cataclysm? In Classic Cataclysm, are Warlocks super, super good? Not that I'm asking for any reason at all, totally unrelated to this video or what we're talking about in this video. I'm just curious for no reason. The Priest healing, which brings an incredible amount of viability and single target healing to your raid group, as well as just a ton of utility with all their buffs and stuff. We both know that these two classes are going to be on top constantly throughout Season of Discovery, mm -hmm. so that is no surprise here. Moving on now to the actual competition between the final three, we surprisingly have Holy Paladin on the third slot. I know a lot oh. of you people out there were upset with the runes Holy Paladin have been getting, but the truth of the matter is that they're raw healing and their rotation just works, man. It may be boring, it may be stiff, but good God, does it work. Their critical strike chance with their heals are through the roof. They're constantly spamming flash of lights, getting their mana back. Mm -hmm. An excellent class overall with very powerful defensives to keep them alive. Definitely a great class to bring inside of your raid. Oh my God. I was going to say, bro, if mages are better than shamans, mages are better than shamans. And once again, we have the mage at the second to last, which has the potential of being really great, shamans in my opinion, suck. in the right hands. They have... Very, very great raid-wide healing and effective DPS rotation if they have some time to cast abilities. Uh, overall, though, I don't think Mage is in a terrible spot. I think of them almost kind of like a half healer, half DPS. That being said, it does seem like Horde guilds, the Shaman healer issue aside, Horde guilds are doing much better than Alliance guilds. Seems to be the case. DPS option, which is always cool to see inside of your raid, so I'm happy with these numbers overall. Not upset here. Something I'm not happy with, though, is once again, Restoration Shamans. Good God, this class just is not performing well once again. I'm hoping this changes once yeah, they get their three-piece tier here. set that makes, you know, their healing rain instant. But overall, this class is just getting flat out. Oh, I think once I get my three-piece tier set, everything's going to be okay. Oh, I think that's going to fix everything once I've got three-piece tier set. Outbeat by everybody right now, man. And it's just not even close. I think this class is in desperate need of some rune adjustments and changes overall to make it even close to viable. So hopefully they get some work done to them sometime in the near future because mm -hmm. it's just it's just embarrassing to see at this point. Uh, you know, it's not cool seeing it's a class at the bottom tier every single phase. So hopefully <laughs> they get some changes. Remember, it ladies is. and gentlemen, this was the very first lockout data. So don't take this too much to heart because... Things That's could true. change over the next couple of weeks or two. I do expect there true. to be some class adjustments. One, there will be class adjustments. Two, once people start getting their gear, right? It's it's true. To some degree, the three-piece tier set bonuses, some of the new gear in Sunken Temple, it kind of levels out. Maybe things are going to balance out a little bit. Maybe. This week from the developers. So that's when we'll really get the real logs for you all probably sometime yeah, no next doubt. week. Uh, don't forget to leave comments about phase three mm -hmm. and everything else so far so we can bring it up. You know, all these problems or concerns you may have in our news videos to try to get yep. them fixed or improved when it comes to communicating with the developers out there. Okay, and then and then he does his community comments section. I'm going to skip that part. Great video. I highly recommend this channel. I'm going to link that in the chat real fast while I kind of give my final thoughts on this. Um, I, I have to say, I think that Phase 3 is better than Phase 2. And not, not just a little bit either. I think it's like considerably better than Phase 2. I think 
Sunken Temple is more fun. I think the loot is more compelling in Sunken Temple. Nightmare Incursions are absolutely terrible. I hate them. I think they're the single worst piece of content we've gotten in Season of Discovery thus far. I really, really hate them. Everything else, I, I think with the, the Wild Offering system, it has done a better job of incentivizing continued dungeon content and dungeon participation. I think that is good. I think the new rewards for the PvP event, for, for the STV PvP event, are not really that compelling. And the ones that are, you can get that taken care of in like just a couple hours. I wish they would incentivize STV PvP more so. I really wish we had gotten Alterac Valley at level 50. If we if we were able to do Alterac Valley right now on top of everything else, this phase would have been insane. It would have been awesome, but they decided not to do that. But um, I think a lot of the crafted stuff um, and some of the new consumables are fun. A lot of new quest lines are fun. What else is there? I like a lot of the class changes too. I really do. I think phase three is going to end up being better than phase two. I think so. I think so. Phase two was like everything we got in phase two was fun and I liked it, but there just wasn't enough of it. And so I feel like in phase three, I, I genuinely do think there is more to do in phase three. Now, ask me a month from now, we'll see. But I think I think I think I feel this way. I think I'm gonna continue to feel this way. And then of course phase four, level sixty, there's gonna be too much to do. So there's that. Uh, great video and great discussion. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to let me know what you think about this. How is phase three going so far? Are you enjoying it on a scale of one to 10? Let me know. Subscribe. Come find me on Twitch. Drop a follow on Twitch. The link is down below and go show some support to the combat kids. The link is in the description as well. Thank you. And as always, stay safe.